What's up guys, Dave Nader 1, 2, and 2, and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're looking at the top 5 cards that should exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! Say what you will about Konami when they design new cards and archetypes, they do have a knack for future-proofing some decks. The issue with that though is, there seems to be several cards in this game that are alluded to in other card texts that just simply don't exist and don't seem to ever plan on existing at all. Alright, as always, I'm terrible at chilling myself, but future Dave, decided to throw in a quick bumper. Make sure you go check out my second channel, Enemy Controller, for tons of fun Let's Play videos on games that I uh, I just want to play that are not Yu-Gi-Oh! Anyway, let's get back to this hot mess. So here we are, looking at those five cards. Number five, another Salaman Great Ritual Monster. As of late, I've talked about Emerald Eagle in several videos. The fact that it's a ritual monster that requires you to ritual summon it using another copy of itself that is already on board to get the full effect of the thing makes the card very, very clumsy. Not only that, but it's also a ritual monster in a Link deck, which is just inherently a clumsy thing for the deck to try to make. Granted, Rise of the Salaman Greats does allow you to use monsters in your graveyard if you control a Fire Link monster. However, you're shuffling those monsters into your deck, so that kind of flies in the face of what your Salaman Greats are trying to do. Seems bad, man. So it would be really nice if we had another Salaman Great ritual monster to actually make playing Rise of the Salaman Greats actually worth it. And funny enough, the card says this can be used to summon any Salamangrate ritual monsters, meaning that there is more than one, but there's not. Yes, this is a ritual spell that allows you to summon monsters that don't exist. Because you're certainly not going to summon Emerald Eagle, because that card freaking sucks. It's incredibly disrespectful. It'd actually be kind of interesting to get a Salamangrate deck that focuses around ritual summoning instead of just Link summoning. Would you replace one strategy with the other? Probably not, but it would be kind of cool to have like two variants of the deck. I think that would be at least. But with Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns uh, finished up, I, it probably won't happen, but who knows. Number four, a Cyber Dark Normal Monster. Cyber Darks are not a very good deck. Why would you say something so controversial yet so brave? So the likelihood of us getting support for them in the future is probably pretty low. However, it's seemingly kind of a fan favorite deck. Maybe because it's like Cyber Dragon's bastard cousin of a deck. Well, why are you pulling me? I'm right. For whatever reason, people seem to like this goofy thing. And cards like Cyber Darkness Dragon here have a real weird thing about them. It's specified that it is summoned by using five Cyberdark effect monsters. Cyberdark Inferno also makes a reference to Cyberdark effect monsters. Okay, fine, there are several Cyberdark effect monsters. However, it's really weird that it specifies effect monsters because that implies that there is also non-effect monsters, which there is not. Which is actually kind of funny considering that the deck does use vanilla monsters in part of its strategy. So it would make some inherent sense for the deck to have cyber dark vanilla monsters in it. But nah, you gotta use generic dragon monsters. That is actually pretty strange. So it just seems like a kind of a natural thing for this deck to have vanilla monsters that are also cyber dark monsters. Although, I'm gonna throw this in, even though it has literally nothing to do with anything. You can kinda get cyber dark vanilla monsters. If you use magical hats on two cyber dark spell cards and then have the card all out attacks face up on board, I'm Pretty sure that you would be able to summon two normal monsters from your deck via the effect of Magical Hats. The two spells that you summon with Magical Hats are considered normal monsters. And then they are then played face up by the Continuous Trap card. And because they have card names, I'm pretty sure they would be technically face up vanilla cyber dark uh, monsters. Maybe. You wouldn't do that. It has no function in the deck. I just think that's kind of funny. Number three, Eldritch Monsters. All the Eldritch spells and traps refer to like Eldritch Monsters. Eldritch Monsters, plural. There's only one, the Golden Lord guy. Eld Eldlix, Eldlitz, I've never figured out how to say this. Eldlixer, it doesn't matter. Of Black Awakening, says you can summon a zombie monster from your hand or deck if you control an Eldritch monster. If you don't, you gotta summon an Eldritch monster. However, since there's only one, the card might as well say you can only summon Golden Lord. 
The deck is really good. It doesn't really need other monsters. Golden Lord's a great guy. Pretty powerful, frankly. However, you know, the deck certainly would benefit if it had more targets. I don't know why it doesn't. Are you telling me that this Golden Land place that this Eldritch guy lives in, he's the just he's the only guy there? Just him on a throne, a, a king with no no subjects, just in a big empty room by himself. You know what? No, that's canon. That's canon. He's he's just a lonely, lonely zombie man. But yes, it is it is just strange that a tier one deck only has one monster and all of its cards refer to as if there was more than one. Oh yeah, here we go. This is a fun one and a classic. Wind Effigy! Wind Effigy is one of those, uh, double tribute cost things, like Double Costin or Kaiser Seahorse. When used as a tribute summon, it can count as more than one tribute for that tribute summon, depending on the attribute of the monster you're playing. In this case, Win Atrophy, Win Atrophy, <laughs> Win Effigy can be used as two tributes for a Wind Normal monster. Specifically Normal monster. That's the key. There isn't such a thing, lol, 10 out of 10, great card design. There is no targets for this thing. How goofy. Though to be fair, it can be used, kinda. By language of the card, there is no targets. However, Samorg Bird of Ancestry counts as a normal monster while it is in your hand. However, it is decidedly an effect monster, and I feel like that's kind of cheesy to say that it counts. But it's the only legal target for the card, and is it really a target? I mean, yes, kinda, it's just, it's not, it's certainly not in the spirit of the card. The spirit of the card's like a level 8 vanilla dragon, you know, that's a wind attribute. So, it's weird that this weird effect monster is the only one that can use it, and it's like on a technicality by the card text of the effect monster. Which is odd too, because there really isn't much of a reason for Ancestry to do this other than so that you can sack Effigy for it. The only other thing you can use it for, and it is technically a two-tribute vanilla monster, is this thing, Leonardo's silver star ship thing. Jefferson's starship is a match-winning card and a pendulum card, so for a couple of reasons, I feel this doesn't count. Number one, it's a pendulum vanilla monster, meaning it does have an effect, so is it really truly a normal monster? I don't know, kinda? But it does have an effect, so it does feel like it's only half counts, literally. Also, you can't use it in a duel because it's a match winner. It's an illegal card. It's printed an illegal card. So I don't even know if it counts by that measure either. It's not a viable target, not because it doesn't exist, but certainly because it, it it's illegal. Also, you probably don't own one. Either way, there just isn't a real, true, like, in the spirit of Epigee's effect, target for the card. And because a two-tribute vanilla monster is not a good card in Yu-Gi-Oh, it'll probably never exist outside sneak peek trash can filler. All right, instead of an honorable mention today, we are going to do mail day openings because there was actually things in my peel box. Oh, shit. This first one comes from Canada with no return address. That is brave. Hope you didn't want any of this back. All right. This is from a Devin. Hey, Dave. Just wanted to say that I love the channel and Newsgeo. I love Newsgeo too. It's a shame no one watches it. I saw the last mail opening and saw you got some plunders and thought you could use some more cards. I could always use more cards. That's a lie. <laughs> I have too many. Devin sent me. We got some numbers. 40, uh, 54? 49. <laughs> we got an egg peg. Nice. Uh, Samoji Shoulder, and then two of the Plunder Patrols. Thank you for that, Devin. Thomas, NH, New Hampshire, sent me a shoe box, uh, New Balance. Nice. The shoe of the middle-aged white men. Priority, man. Holy shit. Oh, fuck. I hope whatever you sent me is now not broken. If it is, uh, oops. Our, okay, there's a bunch of shit in here. Tommy sent me a recipe for cowboy cookies. I will post this on Discord, so if you guys are interested in that, go check that out. And he also me lever. Dear Davinator1212, it's Tom again. This time I am challenging you and Hard Leg Joe to a pack opening war, and both fans of yours, uh, uh, and him will vote on who had the better polls. These products are from Walmart and Target. If you pull anything higher than a super rare in any of the main sets, not including the legacy pads, and or from the former uh, power cube thing, send them back to me, please. Uh, I am also sending a recipe for you and your patrons. All right. All right, so we got a monster box, power cube, and this other cube thing. 
All right, well, uh, look forward to a probably a mid roll video of the week or something like that where we'll open these bad boys up and you guys can see exactly what I got in all of this bulk repack stuff which is always <laughs> super weird what you get. If you guys want to send me fan mail for I, whatever reason that may be, PO Box is down in the description of every video and let's keep going for number one. All right, number one's a three fur because it, it's the same concept for, for all of these. What do Necros, Cyberdarks, and Crystrons all have in common? <laughs> Frankly, not a hell of a lot. Absolutely nothing. Except for the fact they have spell trap searchers that search nothing. Necros of Clausulus. That's why Poopy Ed! Searches a Necros trap or spell. Necros are a ritual deck and have nothing but ritual spell cards. Spell cards. They don't have a trap card. This card searches a card that doesn't exist. Cyberdarks are on the list twice. Wow, that deck must be a mess. It's your funeral, little man. You'll have to enter my Cyberdark Claw, one of those Cyberdark effect monsters, also searches a spell or trap of the Cyberdark archetype. But guess what? They're all spells. They don't have a trap card. Probably should. Couldn't hurt the deck. Hell, a trap monster that summons itself as a vanilla monster. Whoa, hey look, we've come full circle, why the hell not? And then, oh, out of left field here come Crystrons, Noodle Fiber and the Synchro Boys. They, conversely, do not have a spell card, despite the fact Smidger here, Smidger? Careful how you say that one, can search a spell or trap and there is no spell in this archetype. But just to taunt you, they do have a field spell called Crystallic Potential. It, it is a support card for Crystrons, it is a field spell card, but because it does not have Crystron in its name, it cannot be searched by Smiger. Plus, you wouldn't even run this thing anyway, you'd just run Starlight Junction if you're running a field spell to begin with. Starlight Junction? What is your function? If you synchro summon on your opponent's turn, you can shuffle a card into the deck. Was that rhetorical? Yeah, so yeah, Crystrons don't actually have a real spell card that's actually part of their archetype, and the one they kind of do, you wouldn't even run because you'd run this thing anyway literally works with the gimmick of the deck, synchro summoning on your opponent's turn. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed the list. This one's kind of fun because I, I, I assume what we're doing here is future-proofing the game so that one down the line, maybe we can get some future support for these decks. So let me know in the comments below if there's another card that doesn't exist that seemingly gets referenced all the time, or, you know, like Harpy's Feather Duster, which is referenced by several cards in our game, but it's illegal, so it makes those cards effectively useless or just not as good as they could be. Remember guys, if you don't troll the meta who will, see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Dueling takes both luck and skill. Show this by pressing the subscribe and notification buttons now. Bear witness to these other Davinator 1212 videos. Hmm? Odeon! What is it, Master? It's time to apply the ointment. Uh, Come help me with this. I should have left with Ishizu. I can't reach. <laughs>